Well, we have reached the point where uh, we're going to open God's Word together, but we're going to do it a little bit differently today. Uh, As you know, we're in a series where we're looking at real-time things. And the question that I wanted to deal with today is this. It's kind of twofold. How do I grieve what's been lost as a result of COVID-19? And how do I trust that God has a plan in this? How do I trust that God has a plan in this? And I think those two really go hand in hand, and they deal with a bigger thing of trusting the sovereignty of God. And so I want to talk about the sovereignty of God, and I thought, what better way to talk about it than somebody that's walking, uh, walking through something that has a testimony here that can share a story. And so Rick Oshner, he's a mentor of mine. I preached a couple weeks ago about walking with people. And Rick is one of the people that I walk with on a regular basis. The second Wednesday of every month, you can find Rick and I uh, with a cup of coffee, having a three to four hour conversation about life, ministry, the Bible. And uh, he is somebody that, that, that walks with me uh, in my life, in my ministry. And, uh, and, and so I wanted to bring him in. We're going to do it via Zoom. We recorded a Zoom call earlier this week that we're going to play for you, and then uh, we'll sing another song, and I'll come back and close out the message. But let me just pray uh, for us again as we're going to, to hear this conversation. Again, God, give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what you have for us through this conversation and through your word today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Here's my conversation with Pastor Rick. Well, Pastor Rick, good morning. It's so great to have you on the Summit virtual church platform, whatever we're calling it. And uh, I've already introduced the morning a little bit, introduced you. Um, many of us know you, but for those that don't, who are you? Where, where, where do you come from? What's your background? And what's a little bit about what you're walking through right now in this season of your life? Super. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, for those that don't know, I am married. My wife, uh, KD, also known as Karen. Uh, we have two grown sons, uh, Nathan and Andrew. Nathan is uh, married to uh, his wife, Bridget, and their two children, so I'm a grandfather. Uh, and also, Andrew, who is uh, not married currently, uh, just, you know, throw that out there for what it's worth. And, but all of them share uh, in the same passion for Jesus Christ and the gospel ministry, uh, taking it wherever, however, in whatever form or fashion, doesn't matter, but in good times and bad times. And honestly, uh, all I can say for them, especially during the bad times that we've been going through, their love has been incredible. And my wife especially, it's not fun to be a caregiver, all of you who are caregivers out there know exactly what that's like. So uh, I'm grateful for KD. Uh, prior to all of this stuff that I'll be talking about, I was pretty active. Uh, worked, uh, worked out at the gym, uh, not as intensely perhaps, Travis, as you work out in the gym, but I would work out in the gym about three times, three to four times a, a week. I uh, love to go out jogging. Uh, didn't matter whether it was winter time or any time of the year, I just love to be out there. Uh, running. And so I was in pretty good shape. And uh, I I was also in pastoral ministry for a lot of years, 30 years, uh, all of it in the greater Portland area. And I I came to Maine, I have to admit it, I'm not from here, as you all know, but uh, uh, I came to Maine in 1984. And that's when I started South Warren Baptist Church, then moved on to First Baptist Church in Yarmouth and and, uh, finished up in 2016. Uh, so it was a long, good process there. But I felt called uh, when I left the pastor, I felt called to uh, start another ministry, which now I've called Mass Mentorship. And it, it's a ministry, especially, uh, Travis, to encourage other pastors, ministry leaders to uh, uh, stay the course and finish well, essentially. So that's, that's pretty much what I'm about and doing now. That was the plan uh, when I left uh, Yarmouth in 2016. But 2017 came along, uh, and after some very concerning and increasingly uh, uh, debilitating symptoms, I was diagnosed with PML, uh, which I had no idea what PML is. Uh, Most people don't. It's a viral uh, disease, uh, but it often often is really a fatal disease, 
uh, it affects the neurological uh, signals in your brain and how everything gets signaled to your body. Uh, so, the, but they needed to confirm the diagnosis and so they did a deep brain biopsy and after it was all done, consequently they said, well, basically uh, I only had months to likely live. Mm. So that, all I can think of is that was a time of uh, a really sobering, sickening, sinking feeling that all was lost. Uh, yeah, plans for the future <laughs> dashed. Mm -hmm. At that point though, uh, for me, I was all, it was all God or nothing. I mean, simply put, it just had to be that way. All God or nothing. However, by the grace of God and the prayers of many, which in no way reflects the fact that I'm somebody special because I'm not, uh, prayers of many people, I was humbly brought through, now, but now resolved, totally resolved to uh, continue in spite of these uh, uh, debilitating circumstances I'm in. Yeah. But then came this, which you and I got talking about a while ago that day, <laughs> which is kind of in a haze for me, honestly when you came and visited me at uh, uh, what I call Brighton Rehab, I think it's uh, New England Rehabilitation Hospital Center or something like that. Uh, after the brain uh, surgery or the operation, uh, I was in my room, mm -hmm. <laughs> hospital bed, not as a pastor visiting one, but I was in the bed. I could hardly stand up uh, or sit up. Uh, certainly I could hardly sit up, stand up. I couldn't walk. Uh, wheelchair. Uh, I couldn't see well. In fact, double vision, I could see two heads, you <laughs> and you uh, as well, twice as much, not good. But anyhow, uh, I did see that. And, and I felt dizzy and off balance. Otherwise, I was fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, but you, you made this visit. And uh, uh, what I remember uh, really is a degree of su surprise and relief mm -hmm. that you were there. Uh, a tall, smiling face looking at me. I didn't realize how tall you are. <laughs> and, uh, but a gentle assurance in the spirit, rather, uh, really. Um, and, and finally, just, just your presence alone brought comfort and, and peace to me, uh, encouragement. So it was really those like three things. And I just remember we talked about a bunch of stuff. I can't remember how profound you were or were not, but nevertheless, it was that. I was kind of coming out of things, but basically uh, my loss really was one of, uh, uh, you know, uh, certain loves and liberties were gone, uh, you know, that kind of thing. That's where I'm at now in the sense of I can't drive my car. I can't uh, go out and run in the road. I can't hop or skip or jump. Uh, and the other thing is just certain control. Can't do that either. Uh, in my office, my, my own private space, what I eat, all that stuff, you know, move my legs and arms. But in certain times like that, you know, it's, it's kind of feeling like all my plans are dashed and I don't know, I, you know, I, it, I'm kind of lost in it all. So why bother even trying kind of thing? That's kind of where I was. So and, that's it. And I remember, I mean, in the beginning of our relationship, um, you know, and I'm one of those mentees of yours and so thankful for your ministry. And, and, you know, I think one of the most remarkable things is when I came and visited you, there was the sense of, I don't know if I'll ever meet with Rick again, mm. you know, and because it's not going to be, you know, will it yep. be the same? Can Rick even, you know, and, yeah. uh, and just yeah. kind of thinking about that in my mind and think, and, and kind of wondering, what's this going to be like? But I remember it was a Saturday night and, um, mm -hmm. and I remember we had, you know, we had been meeting at Panera and, uh, been, mm -hmm. you know, real, real active there for a while. And then, um, heard that, that this was happening and that you were there and it was a Saturday night. And, um, you know, I think I looked at Kristen and said, I, I need to go to Brighton and just see Rick wow. and, uh, and, and walking in and you were flat. And, uh, and and barely opened your eyes, and which you know, you know, if now it makes total sense. If you were seeing double, I wouldn't have opened my eyes either. If it was <laughs> what you were looking at, yeah. um, but you know, to see 
to see how far you've come in the last mm-hmm. couple of years. I think, uh, you know, we, we're meeting, we're doing this. Um, you're, you're sharp as a tack when it comes to, uh, you know, ministry practices and things like that, and being a mentor. And so before we dive in, thank you. But, you know, the question that we're dealing with here, the first part of the question is, how do I grieve what's been lost with COVID-19? And you've lost some things and you were just, you were just mentioning some driving, you know, being active, jogging, you know, different, different things like that. Um, which no doubt, I mean, those, those things fill, those things are filling and those things, you know, uh, fill your soul. Um, and, and I think, I think for anybody that's dealt with, with loss before, they're going to be able to identify. Yeah, that's loss. But, but, but for you in this season with COVID-19 and you hear, how do I grieve what's been lost? How have you grieved what's been lost in your life? Like you've lost these things. What's that grieving process look like for you? Wow. wow. You know, first thing that comes to my mind, brother, is uh, I haven't grieved well. <laughs> I haven't grieved very well, uh, but I'm doing better. Okay. That's the hope piece. Uh, you know, I, I get depressed. I really do. Uh, uh, I've cried. I cry. Uh, I really miss what I do. I really miss what I used to do more importantly. Uh, you know, you know what I once was all that kind of stuff. I really miss it. Uh, it seems like another world to me. Um, I'm also get frustrated. Uh, I think the uh, appropriate term would be irritated. <laughs> you can ask my wife. Uh, actually, I'll just say I get angry. Okay, I get angry, uh, and uh, I just am frustrated. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll say out loud things like, "I'm done with this. I'm just so done with this." Right? Uh, it just feels good to say that, um, as if I have control over that. And then the other thing, sometimes. Uh, I get preoccupied. Uh, I'm distracted a lot of times, you know, so distracted with things so that I don't have to feel the aches, so that I don't have to feel the ailments that I have. It just like takes me into another world. Right. Almost every day I'm so tired. I'm really, truly every day. But I know that the Lord knows my heart. Mm. I just, I know the Lord knows my heart. Um, So intentionally what I've done in reference to grief like I said, I haven't, I'm not, I'm so not an expert in grief at all, but I've intentionally done some things. I've, I've prayed. Um, I've, I've, I've journaled, uh, which I always think is a good thing to do. And I've worshiped, um, sometimes when I don't even feel like worshiping, uh, I guess you call it sacrifice of praise. Never understood that tra- term, but now I do. Um, and, uh, I've also finally, I, I, I've revisited I've revisited uh, uh, places uh, and things uh, that I once knew uh, that I can't say have or whatever again, rather than avoid them. Hmm. I I think the more that I avoid them, the bigger they get. Uh, So, so I'm probably still grieving two and a half years later, uh, Travis. I really, I think that's true. But the Lord has been with me through it, all of it, all of it. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you said something interesting in there, as if I have control, right? Mm. And, and I think, I think, so, so, what, so respond to this, right? I feel like grief is a real natural, healthy thing, right? To grieve mm. what's been lost. I think where we take grief too far is when, is when we start to be anxious mm-hmm. about what's been lost as if we can control, right? Mm-hmm. The, the whole idea of only control what you're able to control, right? And, and, and you're not. I mean, I'm not comparing situations by any means, but two weeks ago I was out for a run and had a quarter of a mile to go and I threw my back out. And oh. I remember, I remember wobbling home like a penguin and, and laying <laughs> down in the living room floor. And I was angry. I was angry yeah. because, you know, I was, I was working out every day and that was really helping me kind of clear my head every morning still in quarantine. Cause that's my rhythm. That's my routine. And now I, I, I couldn't do that. 
you know, and, mm. and, and Kristen, <laughs> Kristen just kind of looked at me in a moment of that, you know, wisdom from our, from our wives. Right. And, and said, well, you can't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And it's like, it's like the whole, the whole thing from scripture. Do you, uh, Jonah, do you do well to be angry? Mm. I feel like I do. Right. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm in a situation I can't control. And I feel like that's where grief can become unhealthy. You know, mm-hmm. I think grief is a, is a healthy thing. And we walk through the stages of grief, but it, but it becomes unhealthy when we're trying to control things that really we can't control. And we're walking in that season right now as a culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, yep. yeah, that's good. Um, so let's keep, let's keep moving. Um, because as much as I'd love it, I don't think we can turn this one into a three to four hour conversation, but, uh, <laughs> I, yeah. uh, so, so the second part of our question this morning is, how do I trust God's plan, right? And mm-hmm. so in the grieving, what's been lost, right? The driving, the jogging, all the things that you've mentioned, and, and the anger and the frustration and the numbing ourselves, which is, you know, mm-hmm. response to that, right? Because if I don't have to feel it, then I don't know what's going on. So I'm just going to numb myself with hours of TV or I'm gonna numb yep. myself with food or I'm going to numb myself with, you know, um, unhealthy, some yeah, some vice. Right. And, and so how do, how do I trust in that? Right. God has a plan. And you mentioned some things you mentioned praying, you mentioned journaling, you mentioned worshiping, even when you don't feel like it, which, which I've found, I've found pastor that, um, yeah. that, that it's in those times when I didn't feel like worshiping that God just spoke the loudest and I walked away saying, man, I saw the glory of God, but how expound on that a little bit. And then I guess, how, how do you, how would you say you trust God's plan? Um, mm-hmm. which really is the sovereignty of God, which is the topic we're getting to right now. Mm-hmm. Right. How would you, how would you define sovereignty of God and how would you, how would you answer? How do I trust God's plan in this season? And how have you done that? Uh, it, let me just tag on one thing and uh, you know when you said uh, about talking about grief I, you're right we could go for hours but um, take the situation you're talking about you're laying on your back you're in pain and probably in there you're going like darn I'm doing everything right I really am trying to do everything right could you just help me a little bit here uh, you know that kind of thing um, but when you finally realize that you don't have control then you go into grief um, I guess the, the phrase I wanted to say is that I really feel, um, yeah, I really feel that we're supposed to grieve. We should grieve. God gave us emotions, right? Uh, we grieve because we love, period. Uh, and and, and uh, consequently, though, uh, but I don't have to be grief. Hmm. And, I, and I think uh, uh, sometimes we can think that first of all I, if I do the right thing and grieve then I'll be all right others stay stuck in grief it's kind of like an identity it's kind of like I am grief yeah. and uh, and I'm not trying to be I don't want to be insensitive to anybody but uh, I think anytime you've lost someone you're gonna grieve probably for the rest of your life some way somehow but somewhere along the line you go like but I'm not gonna be grief Amen. I'm not going to be grief. Uh, I have a life to live. I have a place to go. And there's a plan. Uh, I don't know what the plan is in all of this, but I, I'm part of a greater plan. There's a sovereignty piece. So, so in some respects, when it talks about making plans, um, I guess my thinking is in a sense of how my faith is like stretched right uh just uh uh you know in in this process that we're in is somehow a faith is strengthened you know a lot of people are going to get destroyed by covid and all that it is certainly some die of it but many uh things get destroyed i think for us really it's a time for faith to be strengthened Hmm. and with that strengthening then we get a better grasp of the plan uh, God's sovereignty and all that. So I was just going to say that what's happened for me in all of this is, um, to put it bluntly, a lot of testing. 
<laughs> and I used to think of testing, and I've said this before, as kind of like a pass-fail evaluation. And I don't think it, it's not that at all. It's more like the testing, uh, like a matter of forging uh, something. Uh, uh, you know, forging iron, you know, yeah, it's in the furnace and then brought out and it's pounded and then it's shoved into water to get refreshed and then back into the fire again. And this keeps going and going, right? And that's, that is testing, right? So, so that's, uh, that to me is part of uh, preparing to be a, a greater part of the plan. Mm. See, if we're not forged, we're a weak blade that's just going to break off in the first battle that comes along. And then also, I would just say reprioritizing, not a, uh, you know, for a lot of people, it's uh, that, you know, it, it, I, you, you kind of reassess what really matters in life. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, changes uh, come of what's important, especially as you approach death. It's kind of like what really matters now. Uh, and then finally, uh, the big category, which honestly i don't like it's suffering so i think suffering comes along with that uh faith piece of being stretched uh and so on uh sadly to say i personally only grow when uh uh suffering happens mm. uh as long as i'm trusting god in it if i'm not trusting him then i'm just suffering for no purpose at all so but if i'm suffering for god it's all me you know uh it's, it's all, all me entering in, all of me, physically, emotionally, spiritually, the suffering. So it could be like physical ailments. It could be emotional agony. It could be a, a spiritual attack, whatever, okay? All of that. And then, uh, you know, this is my simple uh, sense in all of this. And I have no uh, real support uh, in saying this except for my own experience. And that is... I don't have to like it. I don't have to like suffering at all. Uh, I do have to go through it. I do have to go through it. And, 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 you know, and all of this, it's all under God's sovereignty. So uh, that is what it is for me. The, the making plans uh, really comes later uh, or in a sense during certain grasping pieces of it. But you know, when you don't even know, you're in the wilderness and you don't even know where we're going, it's kind of hard to make plans, right? It's kind of like we got to be back to the central purpose of why I'm here in the first place. Uh, what, what was I supposed to be doing? Well, I was supposed to climb the mountain or whatever, you know, that's the thing. Otherwise, I have no idea what the plan is. Right. That's simply put. Yeah. I, and I love what you said there in the middle, you know, talking about redefining values. And I mm. think we're seeing that, you know, I know I'm seeing that in my own life. I actually, two Sundays ago, talked about, you know, you know how would it, the importance of walking, the importance of listening, the importance of those deciding, you know, and I think, I think that that really comes into play here that, you know, we've got to define our values. And, and one of yeah. the things I said in that message was, what a tragedy if we got to the other end of this thing and we just went back to the same old, same yeah. old, right? Yeah. And, and, um, and, I, and I, you know, because I'm hearing such great things, more family time. Uh, I, had just, I just had a conversation um, with one of our students who um, is getting on a consistent uh, d daily quiet time because they don't have to go to school every day and they don't have to do all that. So they're actually more consistent in reading their Bible and they're open that that can continue, you know, as it goes on. So I think the redefining the values piece is huge. I want to dive into our text for today sure. and uh, we're going to look at second Chronicles 20, one through three, and then we're going to skip down to 13 through 17. And I just want to read that. And then I think we're just going to kind of talk about, bits and pieces and, and kind of look at that and be encouraged by the scriptures today. Uh, it says here, after this, the Moabites and the Ammonites, and with them, some of the Meunites <laughs> came against Jehoshaphat for battle. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from Edom, from beyond the sea, and behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar. Uh, that is in Gedi. 
Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord. I love that. He was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. What a picture, right? Skipping down to verse 13. Meanwhile, all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, Go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the valley, east of the wilderness of, of Jerel. Uh, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out, go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. I love that right there in verse 17 at the beginning where where God says you will not need to fight in this battle mm -hmm. what a promise right you will not need to fight in this battle just go stand firm hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf what a powerful what a powerful and one of the points that you made to kind of launch us into this is that God's sovereignty is constantly present over all circumstances, mm -hmm. but it requires my trust and resolve continually present in them. And so we're talking about some of the same things here, uh, Pastor, that we've got to decide, right? We've got to resolve mm -hmm. within ourselves and trust continually in the sovereignty of God. And he's present over all circumstances. And that all literally means all, right? And so what, what would you... What would you just pour out? What wisdom would you just speak from this passage to us this morning? Well, thanks for ask, asking for what wisdom. <laughs> I'm humbled on that one. Um, something totally that came to me while you're reading was uh, the part where it said, uh, uh, after Joseph showed up, it said, uh, verse 4, and all Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. All mm -hmm. Judah. And... I don't know, the verse, uh, I'm terrible on the second Chronicles 7, 14, you know, that if my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. And, you know, we tend to like to go skip all of the middle part and just go to people cry out and God hears. And, you know, there is that seeking his face uh, and letting him say what he needs to say to us. And I think that's hugely important. I don't care whether it's a people, it should be a people collectively, but it should be an individual as well. Uh, you know, I can't just uh, consider uh, God is a sugar daddy that's going to give me what I want, you know, or uh, uh, the uh, what holy Pez machine, you know, that's going to pop out what I want when I want it. But rather it's, uh, it's the way in which we need to go at it. So I, I like the phrase also in, uh, in uh, verse three, it says, jo Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord. Now, I use the word resolve because that's the NIV word for seek you know, uh, his face, or uh, it's kind of like a, a, a different, those two words. So I just want to draw attention to that. Uh, and, and if I could say the two words would be afraid and the other word would be resolved. So afraid in the sense of being alarmed or are terrified uh call it fear okay just fear uh, so as i said sort of before alluding to you can feel afraid yet not be afraid hmm. uh i know that's maybe semantics for some but honestly i believe there's a difference uh we're gonna feel afraid I talk to anyone in the military who's gone into battle and tell them they're not afraid hmm. you know they'll they'll certainly talk about it being afraid okay so so you can feel afraid yet not be afraid so the temptation when that happens 
Uh, I was just talking to the, a brother just uh, a couple of hours ago. Y you have the temptation you want to just flee. You know, I'm out of here. I, 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 I'm gone, you know. So that's natural. You're afraid and the temptation is to flee. But there's the other word that comes in. It says resolved. And resolved is uh, set his face or set himself. Kind of like Jesus uh, uh, set his face like flint when he looked to Jerusalem. It's that inner resolve. Uh, call it faith. Hmm. And, and I put it this way. You can feel uh, unsure yet not be indecisive. Mm. Uh, some people live in indecisiveness all the time. And I, I think for all of us, there are times when we feel unsure. My goodness, what we're doing right now, <laughs> uh, we both feel a bit unsure, right? Uh, but we're not going to be indecisive. Uh, so there's a determination to face it. So either I'm tempted to flee it or I'm determined to face it, that kind of thing. Um, and so afraid and resolved. And Jehoshaphat, trusting in the sovereignty of God, looked to him and, and held his ground, basically, right? Um, he didn't know how it was all going to turn out in the end. He hadn't read the last chapter, you know. He was in it. Uh, and so, by the way, I, I want to say this. It, it doesn't mean there are never situations where you never uh, freak out. <laughs> you know, um, I do, um, uh, you know, where you never freak out and you say, hey, you know what, uh, I got it all under control, or, you know, the John Wayne thing. Uh, I've got it all under control, I'm fine. No, I, I disagree with that. There are many times that we have no control over the situation. And that's the real point, isn't it? We have no control. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and you know, let, let me jump in here because you're right. I mean, he didn't know the end of the story. No. Right? We have the benefit of knowing the end of the story, right? In fact, you know, we're, we're more than conquerors, right, in Christ, you know. And, and, and mm -hmm. over and over and over, we can see this, and we know the end of the story. Um, wow. I mean, that's, that's huge. It, it, well, uh, the, you know, let's take something like something happens is unexpected or unplanned. Let's just throw that in for 500. <laughs> or in painfully so, somebody dies that you dearly love. All of a sudden, you know, uh, it's right there. You know, it's out there. Uh, somebody's passed away. It's awful. It's terrible. I mean, you just don't know. You're not in control of the situation. You can't replay the tape. You, there's nothing. I mean, you're just in it. Uh, so uh, that to me is... Uh, is a hard place to be. And Josephat had to have been there and no wonder he was afraid. Uh, uh, it was not looking good. And so I, he really had to seek the Lord because he knew one thing. He knew the Lord and he knew that God was sovereign over it all. He didn't know the outcome, but he just knew that God knew it. And that is, I think, where we have to come to. Even in our grief, even in the place of I'm in the wilderness. I don't know where I'm going, but this I know is my God is with me. My God is over me. And period. Don't, and don't you think that's the beauty? Because one one verse that's really been speaking to me through this whole process, weeks mm -hmm. now. I mean, I don't I don't even know what week we're on right now. <laughs> um, but one one verse that that I just keep that just streaming is continues to scream in my, my mind is be still and know mm. that I'm God. Right. Mm. And, and before COVID, right. That was a cute verse. And the, the, and the yeah. thought of being able to be still and know that he's God, right. Was, was, was man, almost a fantasy for some people to think, well, yeah, that'd be nice. Right. Um, but, but it's, it, it's really, that's trusting the sovereignty of God, right? Mm -hmm. That in everything, in the chaos, in the loss, in, in, in the hurt back, in the, in the, in the grief of, of a loved one, right? It, it's really in the being still. It's not that you stop. It's not that you flip on the TV. It's not that you numb, your, numb yourself with those things like we talked about earlier, those vices. It's that you, in that 
in that, right, you're stilling your mind, you're stilling your body, you're stilling yourself and, and recognizing he's God, he's overall, he's in all, everything is through him, right? And, and, that's, and that's, the, that's the beauty of, of, of the sovereignty of God, right? Is that I don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Because he already has. Yeah, I, I, I think of, uh, uh, we talk about being in a storm, mm. right? And a storm is chaos. A storm is every hand on deck. A, the storm is, I'm trying to bail out the boat, but I'm taking on more water, okay? That kind of thing. And, uh, and I'm freaking out. <laughs> and I think of Jesus saying to the, the wind and the waves, be still. Yeah. I think, that, think of the word that way. It wasn't like... Uh, uh, which I often think of, I like the psalm that you referenced. In fact, I would encourage everybody to read the rest of the psalm. But to be still, we tend to look at it as a quieting, calm thing, like just hush, little babe, don't be, a, you know. I think it's more like Jesus saying to the wind and the waves, shut up. <laughs> you know, just be still. And I, I know there have been times when uh, I'm sure you as a dad, with one of your little ones freaking out, right? I was just thinking, I wonder if that would work on my kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, they're, they're like beyond themselves with uh, distraught, upset, you know, and you just want to say, look, be quiet. I have something just, I want to say. Just be still. <laughs> be still. Just be still, you know. I mean, there are times as parents, you go like, ah, oh, I just don't want to hear it anymore, you know that kind of thing. But I think there are times when as a parent uh, and you love your child a lot, you just want them to shut up so you could, they can listen to the wisdom that you have for them. Mm. And that's, I think, where Father God sometimes is with us. And he's saying, be still, know that I'm God. It's not an angry, wrathful God. It's rather a God who is saying, look, uh, you're, you're flaying around in the water. Uh, <laughs> Just put your feet down. It, you can stand right where you are and your head's not going to go under, mm. you know, that kind of thing. Just be still, that mm. kind of thing. That'll preach. And, and I'll report back on how that goes. Um, <laughs> so so here, here's the deal. We've got to close this thing up somehow, some yep. way. With, with all of that, right, from Mary to KD, um, mm. we're, so, we're so thankful for you guys. Mm. I, I really... Um, the last couple of years as a pastor mm. Uh, mm. has just been easier with you in my life. And, and mm. I can Thank say you. that about a few people, but um, walking with you is truly one of the greatest joys that I have mm. as a pastor and getting the blessing of doing life with you. And so thank you. Thank mm. you for that. Thank you for the investment that you've made into me and to my family and to this church. Um, Summit doesn't even know how blessed they are to have you um, mentoring me and seeing the fruits of that. So, so thank you. But as we wrap this up, challenge us, put, put, a, put a bow in this thing. What, if, if you could leave us with a life application, with, with, with where to go from here, grieving what's been lost, trusting the sovereignty of God with COVID-19, with, with any loss that we're walking through right now, what would you say? Two to three minutes, wrap, wrap this thing up, yep. put a bow yep. on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, likewise, back at you in terms of it being a blessing for me. And I, again, would be short if I did not say KD being there and providing me a lot is huge. So I appreciate that. So I, I was trying to think in terms of what I have done or I seek to do. And like I've said before, I'm not perfect in this at all, but trying to get it in a simple way. Uh, you know, what do I do when I'm just overwhelmed with everything? Uh, you know, there's kind of phrases I want to use here. Uh, the first one is look up. Uh, look up in the sense of uh, look to the one who is sovereign over you. Uh, you know, Psalm 121 really uh, captures that. Uh, that's where your help truly comes from, is from the Lord. Uh, so look up. And then cry out, okay, cry out, uh, because that's what we need to be able to do anyway, and Father wants to hear that. The Lord wants to hear 
us and expressing our most heartfelt, deepest uh, feelings and thoughts. Just put them out there, but do it in a prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, not like in a, you know, uh, if you will, uh, thee and thou and, and appropriate words, but just cry out to God, okay? And then, and then uh, second or thirdly, take it in. Uh, and what I mean by take in, I mean take in uh, uh, to heart, take into heart what I truly know to be true and that which is uh, unchangeable. Uh, Romans 8, 38, 39, for instance. It's just, uh, I need to take in again to my heart what I already know to be so. Uh, and then mull over is another one, mull over. And what I mean by that is consider all the... Uh, possible options that you've got out there. Sometimes people, yeah, especially when they're in a, a jam, a tight situation, they can think, oh, I, I, I've only got one option. Well, actually, you've got more than that. Just, just everything. Put everything out. Mull it over and then pick the one that is the best option because some of them, honestly, are pretty dumb. <laughs> okay? They're just not going to help you at all. It's an option, but not advisable, okay? Uh, and, and so uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we all know that one, you know, don't, you know, trust in the Lord, not leaning on your own understanding, that kind of thing. And then uh, finally, press on. Yeah. And I, I use that expression a lot sometimes when I sign off on a letter is, is press on. Uh, press on, I mean, press on to finish the course that God has put out in front of you. Uh, that's for each one of us. I don't care whether you're a, a pastor, a parishioner, I don't care whether you're a, a assembly line worker or a CEO, it doesn't matter. Uh, you still need to press on to finish the course set out for you. So Philippians 3 uh, and 314, I believe it is. Um, so look, I, it's not in my own strength that I do these things. It's not in my own will, strong willpower. No, those have all failed me every uh, every there they'll all fail me so it's got to be in something else and it's it really is uh knowing that god is sovereign god is sovereign over me and over it all and he's present with me in it all god is sovereign over it all but he's also present with me in it all so uh you know that that to me in all of the circumstances whatever they are god is sovereign over it uh and uh but he's also with me in it all. It doesn't matter how little it is, how seemingly inconsequential it is, doesn't matter. He's with me. And that's that's kind of how I look at it. I love that's it. it. And you know, yep. sometimes, sometimes pre I want you to I want you to close this in prayer in just a minute. But but let, let me just some, mm -hmm. sometimes we think pressing on means making something happen right? That I've got to press on, that I've got to keep fighting, that I've got to keep pulling, that I've got to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've found in, in my life, in my ministry, and, and just as a dad, as a friend, as a, as a husband, um, is that sometimes pressing on in the waiting, that mm. it just, because we want what we want, we want it now, we want we want our restaurants back. We want our quote unquote normalcy back. We want all these things, but we miss what mm -hmm. God has in the waiting because, and, 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 and sometimes I feel like God, you know, like we said earlier, just be still, just be yes. still, just embrace this. Yes. And, and sometimes I feel like that's, um, maybe the biggest place we need to press on, and, and really, I guess you could say press in, right? Yeah, is probably that, better. Yeah, is that, um, is, is that we, that's not always making something happen. You know, it's not always. Yeah, that's, keep, that's a huge point. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's a huge point. Uh, uh, and especially for those who uh, are leaders, mm. sometimes the thinking is, I need to resolve this. I need to fix this. I need to get her done, you know, that kind of thing. And sometimes it's not that. Uh, it, it is one of, uh, I, I love the phrase press in because it is that. It's, uh, uh, or yeah, I'm going to lean into the wind rather than cover myself from it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that kind of leaning in doesn't mean I'm going to change the wind right. at all. 
It's, I'm just going to lean into it. And so that is it. And then finally, the other thing that comes to my mind as you talk about that is um, sometimes leaning in is not because you know it all, mm. not because you know how it's all going to turn out. You know, the, the classic verse, I mean, I know we both love, uh, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief, you know. I mean, that's reality. That's where I live. That's where we live a lot of the time. Uh, you know, all this talk is not because I've got it all together. I don't. Neither do you. Uh, unlike what some people might want to think. <laughs> you don't have it together all the time. So, so I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. Uh, that's incredibly assuring. And besides, God already knows. <laughs> he's not going like, oh, really? I didn't realize you. No, he's like, I know. I've been wanting you to say this for a long time. Uh, so just be still and know that I'm God. Yeah. And uh, so that's it. Man, thanks for preaching. Mm, and, uh, love, you. love you, man. And thank you for this. Why don't you pray and, sure. uh, and we'll, sure. we'll sign off. Let's pray. Let's pray. Mm. Lord, uh, again, you know each one of us where we are. You really do. Some of us are on mountaintops right now and grateful for being there. Some of us are sheltered from storms and grateful to be there. Others of us, Lord, we're down in the valleys. We're in places where uh, there seems to be no shelter available. Uh, and so we're hurting. Uh, Lord, wherever we are, I pray uh, for each one of us that prays right now, that our eyes would be upon you, that we'd look to you as the one, yes, sovereign over it all. Uh, we don't understand it, Lord. We don't understand why. We don't understand sometimes even where, but we do understand you. And we want to know you more. Please increase our faith. Help our resolve to continue uh, in growing faith, Lord, because we don't want to be the same as we were before this whole COVID thing started. Help us to know you better Help us to know uh, ourselves better and our walk with you better through this, Lord. And so we pray all of this, Jesus, uh, you're the only one It is our holy hope. Uh, you're it. And there is nothing else, no one else. And we thank you and pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Hey, thank you, brother. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, brother.